everybody. It's good to see you guys on and uh, hopefully you are doing well. Um, I'm really grateful for this news that I see here. Of Leslie feeling better. Riley's feeling better. So I love that we get together and we can pray and, um, and lift one another up and, and, and um, be such a great little community for one another. So good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Barb. Um, Janet Soward, Stacy, Joe, Amy. Um, let's see, who else have I seen on here? Janet, Larry. Um, and, I, and Teresa, I know others of you are on here too, but those are the names that I've seen. So good morning, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, December 29th in Jesus Calling says, Trust me with every fiber of your being. What I can accomplish in and through you is proportional to how much you depend on me. One aspect of this is the degree to which you trust me in a crisis or major decision. Some people fail miserably here, while others are at their best in tough times. Another aspect is even more telling, the constancy of your trust in me. People who rely on me in the midst of adversity may forget about me when life is flowing smoothly. Difficult times can jolt you into awareness of your need for me, whereas smooth sailing can lull you into the stupor of self-sufficiency. I care as much about your tiny trust steps through daily life as about your dramatic leaps of faith. You may think that no one notices, but the one who is always beside you sees everything and rejoices. Consistently trusting in me is vital to flourishing in my presence. And that is taken from Psalm 40, verse 4, Psalm 56, verses 3 through 4, Psalm 62, verse 8, and Isaiah 26, through 3, th verses 3 through 4. And you know, that is so true. I was having a conversation yesterday with a friend of mine. And um, he was telling me about uh, an opportunity that he had to, to serve in, in the church. And he was saying, you know, he really wanted to do it in his spirit, and, but yet he wanted to take time to pray about it and to make sure that he wasn't just wanting to do something for whatever reason. You know, sometimes we get involved in things because of ego or pride or we want control or there's a million different reasons why we say yes to what we say yes to. But he just wanted to make sure because he didn't want to step into anything that God didn't want him to do. And um, he got some confirmation and we were talking about that and talking about just the trust and in even the smallest decisions like you would think. Well, surely God would want me to do this because I would be serving him. But sometimes, you know, there's ways to serve God that are maybe not that, you know, maybe there's, there's somebody else that's supposed to do that. And we, he's got something else for us to do. So being careful in the big decisions and in the small decisions is so very important. Even making purchases or anything like that, you know, co you know, covering those in prayer is so crucial and then just trusting God that in his time and his way he'll give us answers sometimes we get impatient um, but if we'll just trust he'll show us the way and we'll be secure oh Lord let my soul rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the Sun glory to the Father Son and Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen and amen all right, our first reading today is from the book of Psalm, chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. And it says, I come to you for protection, O Lord my God. Save me from my persecutors. Rescue me. If you don't, they will maul me like a lion, tearing me to pieces and, and with no one to rescue me. O oh Lord my God, if I have done wrong or I am guilty of injustice, if I have betrayed a friend or plundered my enemy without cause, then let my enemies capture me. Let them trample me into the ground and drag my honor in the dust. Arise, O oh Lord, in anger. Stand up against the fury of my enemies. Wake up, my God, and bring justice. Gather the nations before you. Rule over them on high. 
The Lord judges the nations. Declare me righteous, O Lord, for I am innocent, O Most High. End the evil of those who are wicked and defend the righteous. For you who look deep within the mind and heart, O righteous God. So um, a couple of things in this passage. One, we see a very humble David. We see him as, you know, he is asking God, God, if there's anything that's not righteous in my life right now, if I am seeing things from the through the wrong set of lenses, um, then, you know, just bring me to my knees, Lord, and help me to uh, be able to let go of of any of that pride, any of that control, any of those things that um, if, I, if I've done wrong, if I've harmed somebody, bring it to my Lord so that I can repent of it. That's what I hear David saying. But then there's also, kind of like yesterday, there's also this other side of it where there he's he has people after him and they're persecuting him and they're saying things about him, they're slandering him. And so he's asking for justice. When is this going to end, Lord? Um, come quickly and, and bring them to justice. And, you know, so we when we see this, um, rather than paying attention so much to what David's saying, I think we pay attention to the action. And we see that when we need help, when others are persecuting us, when others are saying things against us that are not true, uh, when people are, are, you know, you can be on a path on, of the Lord and be going in the right direction and you'll have people who are not, that will just stand in your way and there'll be stumbling blocks and, and um, that can even be people who don't even recognize that they're being used by the enemy for that purpose because, you know, they may be um, in the church, for example, um, but they stand in the way and they block everything. Our best bet is not to take revenge ourselves. Our best bet is to pray. And that's what David is doing here is he's saying, oh God, when, when will you come? Please come quickly and deliver me from this. You know, take care of my enemies. In other words, bring justice. And, um, but he's going about it in the right way. He's not going and seeking it on his own. He's praying about it and he's trusting that God will do whatever God needs to do in God's time and that justice will be, uh, served because God is a just and fair God. And so um, we just have to trust in that. But God's timing is often different from ours. And we may not see that justice right away. We may never see that justice, but we trust that justice will be done because we know that God is a fair God. And David obviously knew that as well. All right, so let's turn to Isaiah chapter 65. We're going to read verses 8 through 12. And it says, But I will not destroy them all, says the Lord, for just as good grapes are found among a cluster of bad ones, and someone will say, Don't throw them all away, some of those grapes are good. So I will not destroy all Israel, for I still have true servants there. I will preserve a remnant of the people of Israel and of Judah to possess my land. Those I choose will inherit it, and my servants will live there. The plain of Sharon will again be filled with the flocks of my people who have searched for me, and the valley of Accor will be a place to pasture herds. But because the rest of you have forsaken the Lord and have forgotten his temple, and because you have prepared feasts to honor the God of fate and have offered mixed wine to the God of destiny, now I will destine you for the sword. All of you will bow down before the executioner, for when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen. You deliberately sinned before my very eyes and chose to do what you know I despise. So here in this picture, we have, um, we have those who, even though they may be few, um, there are those who will always stay close to the Lord. There will always be a few. That's the remnant. Um, those who remain faithful. But then you have these other folks who, who will uh, experience justice, whatever God's justice is. And he describes it, what theirs will be here. 
um, but whatever that justice is, they will they will experience that because of their rebelliousness. And this in this description here, I mean, this is a flat out rebellion. This is not someone that just you know doesn't know and that makes mistakes. This is somebody who actually snubs God and says. You know, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I don't care what you think. And we meet people in the world like that, don't we? Um, I met somebody the other day that he just didn't want all this God thing. And I just, it makes, it breaks my heart. And it also kind of makes me want to stand back because when we read scriptures like this, although we know God's not going to strike us down with lightning, that he's a graceful God, we know that there is justice and we know that people who who go against the Lord will experience the consequences of that separation, that their sin acts as a wall and they have that separation. And so I know that the path will probably be a bumpy path for them and it makes me sad for them. Um, but I, I also have to feel like I want to draw a boundary because I don't want to go down that path with them. And, you know, as a younger person, I didn't know all of that, you know. Uh, you just have these friends, and you just go on, and then before long, you, you know, you're taking different paths and paths that you didn't want to be on necessarily. And um, so as we grow and we mature and we get closer to the Lord and we read things like this, then I think it draws us to him more and more. We want to be close to him. We want to experience the good things in life. And more importantly than that, we want to be pleasing to the Lord. We want him uh, to know how much we love him. And so we demonstrate that by not being rebellious, by being humble, by being like David and, and saying, God, if there's anything at all right now that's standing between me and you, then please root it out of my life. And whatever consequences come with that, whatever pain comes with that rooting process, then so be it. Because it's more important to be in the presence of the Lord and to stay in the presence of the Lord and to experience his blessing. So, um, you know, we've got, we've got these two pictures. We've got this hope that, uh, you know, God sees those who are faithful to him, those who stay on the right path. There will always be those people. And then um, no matter how bad the world gets, you know, I just think, wow, what an honor it is to be um, so in love with God that we want to be those people. We want to be that remnant. And so we just stay, we stay, we hold tight to him despite the, what's going on in the world. All right, now let's turn over to the Gospel of John chapter 14. And it's, this is verse 1. It says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If there were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one could come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work that you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. And so the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Oh, this passage is so rich, and there's so much controversy in this particular passage as well. 
For example, I have heard for years people um, say, oh, there are many paths to God and there are many paths to salvation. But when I read the scripture and I trust the scripture, that's why I'm a Christian. I trust the words of Jesus. That's why I'm a Christian. And so it says he's the only way. But yet people, people will try to tell you that, it, that he's not, that, you know, there's many other ways. But if that's the case, then why be Christian? Why would we need to be Christian? And here's the other thing. Jesus is so different from all of the other uh, gods or way, paths to heaven, so to speak, that people kind of ascribe to. Um, Jesus is the only one that resurrected from the dead. And, um, and he lives in, in, in heaven and he's going to return again. And, um, and then the, the other part of that is that his spirit lives in us. This part of the passage where it says that you will do what I do and greater things. Sometimes I wonder if we Christians ever really grasp that sentence. Because God's Spirit, the Spirit of Christ that, that allowed him to do the things that he did, is in us. And so why would we think that we are not going to be able to, to do greater things? Is Jesus a liar? I don't think so. I think that, that we have the ability to do greater things. Now what those greater things are, that's left up to, you know, for discussion. Um, I think that perhaps it means we can reach greater area. You know, we as we share the gospel with somebody, then someone else shares the gospel. And in today's day, with the uh, social media, the we've seen how that can just spread all over the place. And so, I think you know, Jesus Jesus puts His Spirit in us so that we'll share the gospel, knowing that it's going to go out. But I think also there are some things that we do that are very powerful, and prayer is one of those things. We pray, and God works through those prayers. It's not us that's doing it. We are simply a vessel, but we are a vessel that he chooses to use to do greater things. So, you know, this has a lot of substance, this passage. You could chew on this passage forever and ever and ever because it is so rich and so powerful um and yes leslie i know i know what you're saying um so hard to imagine that we can do greater things than jesus raising the dead and healing the blind and etc but um but like i said you know god god can use us for whatever he wants to use us for if we're willing sometimes i think though we stop that flow of the spirit because w our faith is so small and we don't believe that what we don't believe jesus's words so you know today perhaps our prayer could be if we're struggling in this area is we could say you know we could ask god to help us believe what the scripture says i mean not just believe it in that we we re, we hear it we read it and we say okay yeah okay but where it becomes just a part of who we are because what that's going to do is that's going to bring about a boldness and a courage that maybe we're not experiencing quite yet but if you look at the condition of the world we need to be doing greater things because the world has a terrible pull on people and um and it's just we see our children uh, you know we've had some conversations we had some friends that we saw yesterday and you know just talking about our children and and of course we've raised our children together and so um but talking about the struggles the pull of the world um on our children uh, certainly our grandchildren as well. It's And so we need to be strong and bold as Christians. So, um, you know, perhaps that can be our prayer today. And, um, and, and you know, we're told in Scripture um, to ask God for anything. In fact, it says here, yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So perhaps today we could pray for that boldness and that courage and that understanding that yes, indeed, God can work through us 
to do great things, greater things. Um, so, a, a lot to chew on there. All right, as we go to the Lord in prayer, a few updates for you. Um, Amy Kitzmiller reported on Facebook that she was doing really well. Um, she's recovering from her hysterectomy, but we continue to pray for her because we know that that's a long road. Um, and um, we do need to continue to pray for her brother with uh, COVID. His name is Robert. Um, we uh, also have an update. Leslie posted here that she was doing better. Riley was doing better. Um, I praise the Lord for that. Um, John Blair did pass away. He was on our list for healing, um, but he passed away a few days ago. And so we want to keep his, fam his family in our prayers. Um, and the Go Lightly family, I continue to lift them up in prayer. Their, their service for, for Cynthia will be later next week. Um, and uh, other than that, I don't know of any new prayer requests. Um, so let's, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for that promise that uh, you are always with us that you are fighting our battles, that you are fighting our enemies, those who come against us, who will slander our name, who will persecute us, who will act as stumbling blocks in our path to serve you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer that we have and knowing that you hear our prayers and, and that we can trust you and that you will act in your right time and right way. Father, we thank you for hearing us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy when we at times drift away and we rebel. And Lord, today we ask that you will help us to have understanding of those things that we need to repent of and also understanding of the power that, that you have placed in us with our acceptance of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Father, we pray that you will um, be with those today who need healing, those who are recovering from surgery, those who are recovering from COVID. We pray a hedge of protection around our family and our friends and our church families. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us and direct us and that you will help us to be the bold Christians that you've called us to be in a world that is is quickly slipping away. Father, we, we ask that you will continue to be with First Christian Church United, First Christian Church Moore, First Christian Church Alito, Open Arms Sober Living, Spirit Music Ministries, all of those, all of the churches all across the nation that are, are uh, professing Jesus Christ as Lord and who are sharing the truth through scripture, not their own made up rendition of it, but pure scripture. Father, we pray that you will lead us and guide us in your ways, that you will help us to hear uh, confirmation and encouragement, and that we ourselves will be those encouragers in the world with one another and with others, because we all need to experience love and because you filled us up with so much love, now you've called us to go out into the world and to love others. Help us to do that faithfully. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, receive our prayers of tears and sorrow over those... Nope, wrong one. That one was yesterday's. Lord, what you call compassion, others call weakness. What you call conviction, others call dissidence. What you call love, others call mixing with sinners. We pray that we too might be found weak, descendant, and in bad company. 
especially if it means that we are closer to you. Amen. Sometimes you don't know if you're reading it correctly or not. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home right here on Friday morning. Until then, everyone, have a great couple of days, and I'll see you Friday. Bye-bye. Oh,